Hey guys, Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're going to talk about nighttime hypoglycemia, okay? That's a situation where you wake up with a headache, you have sleeping problems, you're tired but you can't sleep, you got sweating around your neck specifically, you're hungry, you're shaking, so you have this blood sugar issues. Uh, now, the, the one thing that I want to mention about that is that usually a lot of people that have this are already diabetics on insulin, okay? And they're taking a little too much insulin that's driving it lower. If you're taking insulin or metformin and your blood sugar drops down too low, my advice would be to um, get with your doctor to back off the medication because it's working too much. If you have too much insulin, it's going to end up below 100. So why not back off versus what a lot of people do is they walk around with a little sugar in their pocket and eat this candy to try to raise the sugar to so-called correct it. But the problem is it's going to keep coming up and down. So the worst thing you do is do six meals a day. It's never going to correct it. It's going to keep it going. You want to get with your doctor to back off the medication because you're taking too much, okay? I mean, the purpose of the medication is to lower the blood sugar, but not lower it all the way down there. But let's say, for example, you're not a diabetic, okay? And you have this hypoglycemia, either at night or whenever. Um, and you go get a test, and it comes out normal blood sugars. There's a condition called idiopathic postprandial syndrome, which basically means, idiopathic is a, a word that means unknown cause, post, after, perennial meal syndrome. So they don't know what's causing this after effect of the meal, okay? This after blood sugar effect. So that's what they name it. So it's kind of like uh, an unknown, um, bunch of symptoms that doesn't show up on a blood test but you have the symptoms and hopefully they won't tell you you're faking it because it's actually legitimate so here's what i think that's going on with hypoglycemia especially if it doesn't show up in a blood test what happens there's a condition called insulin resistance most of you know what that is where um, the cells are resisting insulin and the reason why they're resisting it is because the body's rejecting and trying to protect you against too much sugar. So it's going to block it eventually if you have too much sugar. So then in the cells, because we're not getting the insulin, we don't, and insulin is a key that allows the fuel to go in the cell, now we end up with a cell with low amounts of fuel, okay, energy or even glucose. So we basically have a situation where we have low blood sugar in the cell. It's like hypoglycemia of the cell. And you're, you have all these sensors that are going to pick up. You're going to have these symptoms here. You're going to crave sweets. You know, if your cells are starving of sugar, you're going to crave sweets, especially if your brain cells are starving of sugar. That's going to send a signal back to the pancreas that we're low in sugar. And then we're going to raise insulin. And guess what that's going to do? It's going to drive the blood sugar down even lower. So hypoglycemia is a situation where we have too much insulin that pushes the sugar down below where it should be. Well, one cause of too much um, insulin would be insulin resistance. So really, hypoglycemia is an insulin resistance situation that starts at a very um, low level and it gradually increases over time. It'd be interesting if you have this and you have normal blood sugars to get a fasting insulin test to see what's going on. I bet you that would be very high. It'd be probably 10, 20, or 30 uh, so it should be a lot lower. But the point is that if you have these nighttime uh, hypoglycemic reactions, um, chances are you have insulin resistance, and that means that you need to fix it using food. And the way to do it is not to have five meals a day. The way to do it is to con food, consume food that's higher in things that, a type of food that doesn't increase insulin. So in other words, we want to avoid the stimulation of insulin. That's the goal. So we want to avoid carbs, refined carbs and sugar for sure, and fruit. We want to avoid all that. Fat will help you. Fat will actually not increase insulin. It will make you satisfied so you can go longer without eating. Eating in general triggers insulin. So you're going to have to not eat as frequent. It's called intermittent fasting. So just start with three meals a day and add more fat. Have a good amount of greens, salad, vegetables, have a moderate amount of protein, 
And, and if you do that over a period of two or three weeks, your body will start to adapt, the insulin will come down, your blood sugars will level out, and you will no longer get hypoglycemia. Now, in the transition phase, if you have, still have symptoms and you're transitioning through this and it's rough, instead of eating sugar, you can have protein. Protein will trigger the opposing hormone to insulin called glucagon, and it will raise sugar, okay? So that's just a side note because what we're trying to do is we're trying to fix this insulin spike that's you know, kind of over-exaggerating bringing this thing down here, okay? So anyway, I, I hope that gave you some uh, idea of what's really behind this, and the thing not to do is to continue the, the sugar pills. Um, and then also if you're on medication, get with your doctor to make the adjustments. And even if you're a diabetic, I recommend doing the intermittent fasting as well as the ketogenic diet. All right, thanks for watching. Hi guys, hey listen, I created a pretty amazing evaluation quiz down below that actually analyzes your symptoms to find the cause, the root cause of all of your symptoms, the most likely cause. So take the quiz now and we'll send you a report.